No? Okay. Don't breathe. No, okay. Well, chemistry is easy. Biochem is hard. Okay, I failed biochem twice in college, in university, twice. The first time I took it, I forgot to drop the class. <laughs> it's really, I forgot to drop the class, so I didn't know that I still have the class. The second one, I think I'm smart, so I got with the B. So I wait for last minute study. Okay? The third time I passed with a C. When I went to medical school, I got an A. Okay. Yeah, actually, I actually studied. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but on my record, it's a C in the university. Medical school record is an A. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes you think it's easy, you just wait for the last minute. Okay? So. But let me ask you this question. If there is a teacher who failed the class two times <laughs> teaching you, and a teacher who passed the class the first time, who is the better teacher? The fail one. The fail one. The fail one. You didn't notice that. Because he failed, he know his mistake, he can go over and over. He actually know the material. If you look at that way. <laughs> okay? Because the term teaching, to teach somebody, you need to know your material very well, isn't it? And we learn it. A good uh, the one who has that doesn't, mean, doesn't have to be a good teacher. He can be a good test uh, test teacher. Mm -hmm. But the one who actually fails actually is a good teacher. So what does that mean? All teaching. Okay. <laughs> 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 we always say that uh, if you fail in Canada, practice medicine, you become a teacher. Right? So it's funny. It's like, oh, it's <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go over this one. Okay. Understand the chemistry and biochemistry to determine the most effective solution to treat the dehydration and food loss. Okay. This is important to uh, know this concept. You late 10 push up. <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't say hi to her. So this morning she was mad at me. She didn't talk to me. So I didn't respond. She's kind of stroke. How she do? She didn't get better. So this morning. She's kind of hungry, eh? Yeah. So this morning I told her. I, I whatever I told her, talked to her. Yesterday I slept only three hours because I had to wake up and uh, even though my brother couldn't do the job, so I had to wake up. So this morning I talked to her. She didn't respond before I go to work. So you know I, I said, Mom, I want to get married. <laughs> okay? She's fine. She's like. <laughs> So this, and I said, put a man in the suit on. Whatever is funny, whatever is funny, funny. I was like, what? Is that Chemistry with biology, you call it biochemistry. That's what it is. Are we okay with that one? 
So you have basic chemistry, organic chemistry, combined with biology, become biochemistry. Okay? So the basic concept breaks down to what we call matter and energy. Everything come back to this one. Okay? So matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Matter can be seen, smelled, or felt. Okay? Okay. Seen, smell, or felt is matter. Now, if you say, how about, how many senses do you have? Let's do application. How many senses do you have? Five senses, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So you have eye, so the matter is the object, what you see, isn't it? How about the hearing? Do okay. you feel the vibration or you hear? This is where a lot of people make a mistake. Now do this one for me, do this test. Block one of your ear and say something. <coughs> say something to yourself. Say something. Would ear if you hear or feel louder? Say the one you block. So you didn't actually hear from that ear. Because if you hear, you need to have air contact, the space between the object and your receptor in your ears. You know? Your cochlea is the receptor. So when you do this, you actually feel the vibration of your voice. Do you understand? <laughs> a lot of people make a mistake, they think they hear, no, you hear. So what, this test is important to prove to you that sometimes we use this test to prove that you have something blocked up your external ear, like wax, cause you lost the hearing, but you didn't lose the hearing. It blocked the air conduction to go in, lead to loss of hearing. So the receptor and the sound problem me. Well, that's why if, you, if you're under the water, you can't hear anything. That's what happened. Because you block out in air, isn't it? So you, what you heard is you feel the vibration of the water and the water. Now, got it? Mm -hmm. It's important to know that thing. So now, let's go with... So let's forget the vibration. Let's go with the hearing. See, your hearing now is not good anymore. This is good, but for science, but you know, if you go to detail, that's why I want to go to detail with you a little bit more, for the practical use. If you have something hitting your ear, what is hitting your ear to hear the sound? So what is the sound made of? Wave. Wave. Sound wave. What is sound wave made of? Um. <laughs> sometimes energy, and energy is made of sometimes matter too. It's in another form. So if you go back, it's still matter. <laughs> it's still matter. In another form. That's all it is. Are we okay? So all your five senses go to the same state. You have a receptor, you have an object, they need to meet, contact, there's no space in between. Are we okay? Yes. Okay? Now you also need to pay attention to it, isn't it? If I'm talking to you, and there's some noise, if I pay attention to you, I actually block out that noise, isn't it? I mean, I receive more information from you than the noise that I'm there. But I actually hear everything. Okay? So what I just talked, what I just told you now is a technique for Vipassana meditation. Exactly the same. If you go to detail, that is... What well, kind of meditation? Vipassana, uh, knowledge meditation. Exactly the mechanic, same mechanic. Okay? But you have to understand different form. But it's the same mechanic. What you learn, okay? So matter can be seen, smell, or felt. Weight is mass plus the effect of gravity. There's a difference between the weight and the mass. Okay? Mass never change. Remember, mass never change. But weight change based on where you are, based on gravitational force. Mass never change. Are you okay? But weight change based on the gravitational force. So the high altitude you go to, so if you go to uh, Colorado, okay, it's a high altitude, what happened to your weight? Lighter. Lighter. So you have you have vacation there and you're happy then which way you come back and you know, refresh <laughs> and you want to go back there. <laughs> so high altitude, your weight is a little bit lower. But your mass never change, remember the mass never change. Okay? So that's the key. Okay. So state of matter. Okay? Matter exists in three possible states. Fix this one. 
actually fall asleep. Fall asleep. Okay, but the basic concept is three. The stage four is we call plasma. Like the sun. Okay, they actually fall asleep. If we learn the detail. The basic concept I always say that three state matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Okay? Solid is a definite shape and volume. Okay? So between matter and matter, between atom and atom, there are less space in between. Okay? Less space in between. So if you look at the box, this box, let's look at this box. You say a solid is when you have these matter compact against each other all the time. So there is no, see, to make up a shape. Okay? But how come matter, how come solid always undergo a biological curve? Okay, and that. Because any matter always undergo, we call entropy, the vibration. If you vibrate between two objects, atoms like this, over time they're going to get destroyed, damaged, and change to another form. So solid or doesn't matter over a long period of time, this table will be broken down. There we got it. You have to understand the bit of that. Okay? Solid liquid is a changeable shape, that's the volume. Yeah, the same volume now they have more space in between. That's all it is. Right? And gas is the same thing, it is less. What's plasma? A uh, plasma is like the sun, very hot, compound, very heat, hot. But so the sun is an example of a plasma. But as far as the space that it occupies, it's like. It's will all matter occupy the space. It still occupies space. Plasma still occupies space. For the part. Yeah. Even for the gas. It will take space. It, all of it will have some space. You don't see it, doesn't mean they don't take space. But does it, do they have, take less space than gas in the order? Is it even more... Uh, Far away? Factors? Is it a liquid? It's in a liquid form, in a hot liquid form. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. The sun, if, if you look at the sun, if sometimes they have a uh, storm, there's a sun storm or something, mm -hmm. we look, you see it's like lava. Mm -hmm. It's a liquid, liquid form. Mm -hmm. Very hot liquid state, okay? It's so hot that it, okay? So in it's different forms, so it's like we said the sun or something like that. So that's the plasma form. But on Earth, usually we talk about those three states. You could have two layers. Yeah, of course. Of course. So what, in, in, in down here, what are the examples that one of the things can go three stages? It is water as an example, isn't it? So you have water as a ice, as a water, liquid water, or gas as an air vapor. Okay, you can go based on the temperature change. Now let's go energy. If the capacity to the work or put matter into motion, energy does not have mass in order to take up space. Okay? The greater the work done, the more energy it uses. Okay? So energy I have actually two types. You have potential energy and kinetic energy. Okay, so let's go to the next picture. versus potential energy. Is that good? No, I don't think it's a right slice. Give me a second. <coughs> oh, it's a right slice. Okay. So kinetic energy is just two possible form. Energy, kinetic energy action and potential energy is stored in the energy. <coughs> so what is the difference between kinetic energy and potential energy? A waterfall is a potential energy. It's already stored, it has a potential. A battery is a potential energy. It's a stored energy, can release a certain energy. Okay? So a trend from potential can store energy, can be released, resolve into action. Okay? Resolve into action. Okay? 
There is a form of energy, chemical energy, stored in a bond of chemical substance. Okay. Chemical energy is very strong. Sometimes we do what we call free radical. If the electron, if, if the atom is not stable, they call free radical. Free radical is <coughs> unstable. When they are unstable, they are very they are radioactive to cell life, cause cell membrane damage. Okay. Cell membrane damage. Electrical energy results from movement of charged particle, positive and negative, not chemical, involved movement of matter. Radiant electromagnetic radiation travel in wave. Okay. Heat is a lot of ultra So different form of energy. And they convert to one form to another form. Okay. Okay. So convert from one form to another form. Okay. Energy conversion is inefficient. Some energy is lost as heat. So if you have a hundred percent efficiency, there should be zero heat. <laughs> but it's impossible to have a hundred percent efficiency. <laughs> There's always some type of heat. Okay. Some type. If Oh, I'm 47, so I'm also. Sometimes we have an old car in the long term. They eat overheat easily. Did you notice the car? <laughs> the old car. So when you drive from here to second, it takes about six and a half hours. You have to halfway, you have to part way for the car to cool down and you know, stuff like that. Right now, you can drive straight through, isn't it? But it overheats because the radiator hose is worn out. <laughs> no, that's different. That's rubbish. <laughs> okay? So if the car overheat, what do you do? Can you drive when the car is overheat? Open it up. What? You turn on the heat in the car. Thank you. That's what you do. Yeah. You turn on the heat in the car. Looks like a negative feedback. That's what you do. <laughs> okay. Okay. So a lot of there was sport car with no roof. You know, young old man with no car. <laughs> See, the car is broken down, just use a <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Now all matter is composed of elements. Elements are substance that cannot be broken down into similar substance. Four elements make up 96% of your body. These are the one. Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. <coughs> These are the one essential for life. Mm. So the first four are essential for life. Remember last week we said when we look out for life, we're looking for these elements. Okay. But remember the definition of life based on our definition. <laughs> so it might not be called. There, there might be another life form in a different makeup of a different matter of Okay. Nine elements make up of 3.9% of the body and you have make up less than 0.01%. Okay. Now all elements are made up in atoms, which are unique. Block of each element, smaller particle elements with property of that element, and they give a particular physical and chemical property. So now we learn how to simple. Okay, so that's the example. One or two letter chemical shorthand for each element O for oxygen, C for carbon, okay, sodium is natrium, is sodium, and uh, potassium is calcium. So a lot of these terms come from Latin, and they abbreviate into one or two syllables. Okay, one or two syllables. So the example is right at O, okay? Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. Okay? Now approximate about body mass, 65, 18.5, okay? And they are component function in our body based on this. So don't worry about that, okay? Because this is very vague information. Vague information. Oxygen actually makes up 65% of the body mass? Yes. Towards all of air. Yeah. If you look at the structure of protein, amino acid, uh, carbohydrate, yeah. all of them have oxygen. Uh. <laughs> all of them have oxygen. And all of them also have carbon too. That's why we have organic chemistry. Organic is carbon, change lines. In organic, you also have uh, oxygen, but it doesn't have to have a carbon. Okay, so most of the elements will know uh, they are happy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So calcium, phosphor, potassium, sulfur, these are something we call electrolyte in our body to test. 
that someone has similar function. Okay? Similar function. Okay? Now, these, chromium, cobalt, copper, fluorine, magnesium, these are, if you look at these guys, these are the most common out there that they sell you, they say this is a supplement treatment. Okay? Don't take their word for it. <laughs> you don't need that much. This is 0.01% required for your body. Okay? You don't need that. Don't take those supplements. Don't believe in that BS. Okay? <laughs> so let's go over the structure of Okay? So a structure of data composed of three things, proton, neutron, and electron. What, whatever the proton number, the electron will have exactly the same number. Okay. So they carry a positive charge and they weight one arbitrary, they call one AMU or one mass. Okay. Electron is a negative charge, there's no weight. Okay. So zero. Neutron has okay, no electrical charge, that's why you call neutron, zero charge, but the weight is one AMU. Proton and neutron act together, become atomic weight. Are you okay with that one? Mm -hmm. The atomic weight is when you add the proton and neutron that are in the nucleus. Okay? Every atom has an atomic weight on the periodic table. Now on the periodic table, you have like oxygen. It's 12. Okay? So let, let, let me go over the example later. Okay, so just hold on to that thought and now we can think. So number of positive protons is balanced by the number of negative electrons. Okay? So atoms are electrical neutral. Okay. <coughs> so the the one on the periodic table they list for you are most are neutral. The most common one. You have different type of oxygen out there. Or they call isotope. So oxygen, you don't want to only have one type of oxygen, you have different subtype of oxygen out there. So the one that they list on your table are the most common one. Same thing as hydrogen, same thing as helium, and we'll with that one. Okay? So there are different isotopes. Okay? Proton and neutron are found in the central located nucleus, and the electron orbit around the nucleus, and they divide these two models. So the old one is a planetary model, the new one is the only one. Okay? So this is okay, simplified out eight, incorrectly with the electron in orbit. They are fixed circular path. So most of the picture that you see, uh, you will see both. Orbital model is three-dimensional, it's much better. Okay. Where electron is what like to be located rather than fixed or orbit. Okay. Useful for predict the mechanical behavior. So right now we this one is a better one. But remember, we we still use this one to illustrate so it's easier to understand. It's just easier to understand. This is a 2D, this is a 3D in a way. So this is a planetary model, it's not 2D, it's easy to see. This is a 3D. Mm. Are we okay? So it's harder to imagine. So if you put both of them together, it's easier to see. Okay? So now let's look at this one. Let's see. You have two protons, okay? Two neutrons, so the atomic weight is four. Are we okay? So the atomic weight is four. Since you have two protons, two protons is also have the same thing as electron. So that's why you have two electrons out here. See that? So whatever the proton, you have the same electron out there. Got it? If it is a neutral state. If it's not in a neutral state, then you don't have the equal sign. <laughs> okay? So right here you have two proton, two neutron, two electron. And the atomic weight is you add the two proton, two neutron, you will get four. A, A and U. Atomic mass unit. Are you okay with that one? One proton is one A and U. One A and U equal to our hammer medical school. Um, electrons even though they have Electron energy. has zero weight. Oh, okay. They're, they are charged, but they have zero weight. Yeah. So that's all. Okay. So different elements contain different number of subatomic atoms. Hydrogen has one proton, zero neutron, and one electron. So what is the atomic mass? It is one. 
We will have two protons, two neutrons, two electrons, so it is four. Lithium has seven. Are you okay? So that's what it is. So atomic number, mass number, isotope, and atomic weight. So let's go over not all of those. Okay? So they do what we did before. So atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. Make sure I will catch you one of these. So if you remember I asked you what is atomic number, atomic mass, you know those things. Are we okay? So four things you have to know is these things. Atomic number, mass number, isotope, and atomic weight. What they are and identify. Okay? So the way you write this one, number of protons in the nucleus to the left and the bottom. So three. Atomic number is three. Mass number is seven. So what is a neutron? This is a total mass, this is a proton. So what is a neutron? Four. So that's what you do. Four. Okay? How many electrons? Uh, three. three. Whatever the proton, you have exactly electron. So three electron, three proton, four neutron. And that's the atomic mass. Okay? So atomic number is the same thing as so a proton. Got it? See? Simple, isn't it? Simple. Simple. Now, isotope. Structure variation of same element. Atom contains same number of protons but different number of neutrons. <laughs> so, this is what we call isotope. The definite isotope. Same element, same number of protons, but the atomic mass is different. Got it? So, the one that you list on the periodic table is the most common one. But there are different isotopes out there. So sometimes you hear carbon-12, carbon-14, those things like that. Mm -hmm. They use it because they have a very active uh, EK, so they can use that to estimate the age of the element, of certain things. Okay. You notice that? <coughs> so they use carbon isotope. Okay. So atomic number are the same, but the mass number are different. Okay. So atomic weight is the average mass of number of all isotopes to form an atom. So that's what that's in the periodic table. Atomic weight. Are we okay? Yeah. And that's the answer. Okay. Simple. Okay, so let's look at this one. Okay? Hydrogen. See that? H1. Deuterium, deuterium. These are very radioactive. Okay? These are what we produce. Hydrogen bomb. The isotope, the one that kills a lot of people, hydrogen bomb. Okay? These are, these are not stable. Okay? The one that for us exists, natural occurrence exists. These are very highly radioactive. Okay? So these are isotopes. So if you look at it, so the atomic number is 1, isn't it? The atomic weight is 1. Okay? The proton is 1, then the neutron is 0, electron is 1. In this one, what is the atomic number? Hydrogen is 1. So atomic number is still the proton. It's still 1. Atomic number is exactly what the proton you have. Atomic weight is 2. So the neutron has to be 1. one 2 subtract is 1. Electron is still 1. Okay? okay? So let's go back and forth. But is it safe to say that the radioactivity actually stems from neutron? Since your H2 and H3s are radioactive, but your normal H is not. The radioactivity is based on how they separate. The neutron is separate. The force it takes to separate. How powerful it becomes. It releases energy. Yeah, to release that energy. And to release that, you have to bounce something to it. Yeah. Okay. That's what we do. We try to do atom and atom heat together to create. So they, they shoot out a proton and another proton to hit each other to create a dark matter, a quark. That's what they do testing with. You're talking about the atom smasher? Yeah, atom smasher. Same thing. You need to squash it to create the force. Okay, so radioisotopes are isotopes that decompose more stable form 
atom lose various subatomic particles of the loss without an isotope become a different element. Okay. So this energy referred to radioactivity can be detected measured with a scanner. Okay. That's how reactive it is. But for biological research in medicine, okay, used for diagnosis of certain disease. For example, we can use radioisotope. The, the best example is the for thyroid plants. Iodine 131. Iodine 131 is for purpose to diagnose, to treat your, to kill your cancer cell, to kill your thyroid plants. Okay? It's also used to diagnose if you have cancer or not, depending on the level. Or sometimes we use isotope to test because they light up. When we took an X-ray, they light up. So sometimes you drink, uh, sometimes you uh, all, we, all the time, you know, CT with contrast. The contrast is this one. They light up. So they are radioactive. Okay? It's very funny. You know when they give you this test for injection? The technician <laughs> carry a spoon, a lead box. It has to be lead box. They have gloves, everything, and the patient is naked, isn't it? <laughs> oh, <that's right. laughs> and the doctor, when they see that, the doctor is like, stay away and put their apron on. <laughs> and the patient was like, what's going on? And they tell you, it's safe, the whole is safe. We inject it to your body, it just light up a little bit. And their reaction is like, <laughs> okay? And they tell you, it's safe. Okay? Uh, it's fine. Okay? <laughs> okay? So, all reactions can damage the tissue. Sometimes can use to destroy localized cancer, that's what we use. Okay. Sometimes cause cancer right on. In California, anything with mining or under, if you build your house under the basement, by law you have to have a radar measurement before you're allowed to build. This is the amount of the release gas. This is a certain gas release. Over time can cause lung cancer. So that's the law in California. Radar. Okay. It says from the uranium decay. A very small amount. The thing is that we have uranium deposited in the Delphine? Very small amount. In California, by law, you have to order that test before you build the basement. Anything underground. That's just the law. And you also have to have a sensor of radar. Mm -hmm. like, like a smoke detector. So you also have a radar detector down there. Okay? Because these material reach out later on. Now, more, most atoms can be combined to become a molecule. Okay? So, generally, term, two or more atoms bound together is called molecule. Specific molecule that have two or more different kinds of atoms bound together is compound. So, CH is 12 or 6. This is a carbohydrate. Okay? A starch. Sometimes we write a CH2O. You, you reduce to the lowest one. This is what called simplified form. Okay? But the right one has to be C6H4O6. So there are six carbon, uh, six uh, hydrogen and uh, six oxygen. That's what that means. Okay? So molecule with only one atom, okay, is H2 or O2. That's called molecule. And they are stable. So how do they say that? Now, most of the atom, so let's look at the atom. Okay? So H has one positive, isn't it? So one positive in there, so if you look inside, it's one positive. So this is your nucleus. You have a negative charge here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So have seen you have one, you only have one, isn't it? It's not stable. In order for the orbital ring to be stable, you need to have two, eight, eight electrons. That's a standard practice, to be stable. Any atom to be stable, they need to have two. The first one has the first ring has two electron. The second ring has had eight. Third, fourth, fifth, whatever it is, is eight. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. If you have seven, it's not stable. You need one more electron to add them to be stable. Got it? Now let's look at the H. H is stable because you share another H. So you have one H here, you have one electron. You have another one with one electron, they share. If they share, now they become two. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why they are stable. So you write H2 in the stable form. If you write H by itself, you have to write H by itself like that. Mm -hmm. 
Everybody okay? So, age is not stable by itself. By itself, it's not stable. Because they only have one thing to charge. It's how do we? In order to say you have to have two electrons or eight electrons. Why is it eight? That's the law. Can we, that's the law. I, I can't. We, we don't know the answer. It's a stable it's state. But it's two rings or it's multiple rings? Multiple ring. The first ring is negative two. Yeah. Any ring after that has to be negative eight. All of them. All of them is eight. How many rings does it have to have? Uh, maximum is I think only eight ring. That's all it can have. But can it have three rings of eight? Yeah. Is that the, we only we only count the outer ring. The most outer one. Oh. So let's say the most outer ring has eight. Is it good to go as an H positive? If you have, let's say you have C uh, C six. Okay. Let's say C over eight. It's not stable. You know why? The first ring is two. Mm -hmm. The second ring is only mm -hmm. six. It's not stable. You need two more. So number ten is more st is stable. Whatever with number 10, isn't it? Because 2 plus 8 is 10. Or 18 is stable. So 2, 10, so 18. Always subtract the 2 first to figure out the 2. It's like what? The outer one. So anything outer one has to be 8, 8, 8. Either the first is 2 or. We always count the outer one, the most outer one. They either is maybe. Are we okay? The first is 2. Any ring of that has to be 8. Okay. There's a max of 8 rings. What? Max of 8 rings. Uh, max about eight ring. Not counting the inner. No, no, no. We don't. Okay. We talk about how many ring outside of the ring. So oxygen is a molecule. Okay, they, they combine two atoms together. So in here they try to tell you two atoms bind together and call molecule. And this is a stable molecule. Are we okay? Mm -hmm. Oxygen is a stable molecule. Okay. So. In this class, they don't go that detail, but in your chemistry, we, they are more detailed than that. They are different uh, uh, binding, okay? Bond, so ionic bond, uh, you know, covalent bond. Within the covalent bond, you have polar pop bond and non polar bond. Polar covalent bond. And you also have hydrogen bond. <laughs> okay? So, when, it, when you go to chemistry class, there's more detail than this. Because this is an uh, anatomy class, so they just go superficial. Okay? okay? But one thing to remember for me, for my class, is that this is anatomy. Anything is not A. Are we okay? It's radioactive. They are not stable. Anything is not A outside the ring. Or anything is the first, or if hydrogen is only one atom, one electron. So they need to be two. If they're not stable, they are very radioactive to cell living cell. That's the key thing to remember. They are radioactive to the living cell. So the example I give you this one. On the air, oxygen is O2 to be stable. Okay? Oxygen they share, not the one. So it's O2. Now, yes? O2 and outside the air and all in the body. Uh, in the air. In the, the air. Bodies, in the body, they, they bind with the other one, they become a compound molecule already. They're already stable. Okay. So when you inhale, you actually inhale O2. They're stable form. Now, if you have a machine that they call purified air filter, anybody have that one? 